Hello. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm going to talk about antibody-based tools and protocols for characterization of pluripotent stem cells. Cellular characterization is a quick, simple, and effective tool to determine the presence of self-renewal, pluripotency, and differentiation markers for both embryonic and induced pluripotent stem cell lines. The above-mentioned markers are offered in kits that perfectly pair the primary antibodies with matched dye-conjugated secondary antibodies along with appropriate buffers. These reagents are versatile and offer a streamlined solution to acquire more information per sample via multiplex staining strategies. These kits can be used with a variety of imaging platforms, including the EVOS imaging systems. These simple-to-use antibody kits are the first-in-kind, offering superior imaging for stem cells, embryoid bodies, and differentiated cell types. I will be talking about two types of kits. First is for staining live cells, and the second is for staining fixed cells. Live cell imaging kits detect positive or negative cell surface pluripotency markers. They are useful for monitoring the reprogramming process and also improve the process of identification and selection of reprogrammed colonies. The kit is also helpful as a quick pluripotency marker check during routine pluripotent stem cell culture. The fixed cell ICC kits can be used to detect markers for pluripotent stem cells, germ layers, neural stem cells, and cardiomyocytes. These kits come with all the necessary buffers, matched primary and secondary antibodies, and DNA nuclear stain. I would also like to introduce the EVOSCOPES that were used to acquire many of the images that you will see in the upcoming slides. I would like to specifically mention the EVOS XL, which is used for phase contrast imaging, and the EVOS FL, which is used for fluorescent imaging. The EVO scopes have excellent face contrast and fluorescent optics with LED light cubes that offer lowest photobleaching properties and are perfect for all routine imaging needs. The advantages of these EVOS microscopes are, one, they have a bright monitor instead of the oculars, which enables these scopes to be used inside the biosafety cabinet for easy evaluation of cells, as well as a good teaching tool. Second, they have a simple fluorescent imaging system that does not need a dark room since it uses the LED cubes. And third, they have three USB ports, one DVI output, and networking capabilities to easily save all data files. This slide lists the merits of the live cell imaging kit. On the top right, you can see that the Alexa Floor labeled antibodies are sterile filtered, bioburden, mycoplasma, and endotoxin tested, and they come in three wavelengths to accommodate the most commonly used microscopes. On the left panel, you can see that the kit or the antibodies has a quick an easy 30-minute protocol. It detects cell surface markers with CD44 as a negative stem cell marker and TRA160 as a positive stem cell marker. Incubation time for primary antibody is as short as 15 minutes or as long as one hour, and incubation can also be carried out at room temperature. Staining of the cells will persist for a few days but it is best to image the cells in the first hour after staining. Most importantly, the antibodies contain no cytotoxic preservatives, 
such as sodium azide, and no adverse effects on cells were noticed with routine use of the live stain. This is an example of live cell imaging for routine cultures of pluripotent stem cells, or PSCs. These are induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPSCs, cultured on mouse embryonic fibroblasts, or MEFs. They were stained using antibody for fibroblast marker CD44 and pluripotent stem cell marker TRA160. Imaging was performed following a media exchange into fluorobright DMEM medium using an EVOS FL imaging system. As you can see, the top left panel shows a phase contrast image of a stem cell colony surrounded by MEFs. The top right panel shows the same stem cell colony staining positive for live TRA160 stain but the MEFs are staining negative for the same antibody. The bottom left panel shows that the MEFs are staining positive for the CD44 antibody, but the stem cell colony stains negative for the same antibody. And the bottom right panel shows a merged image of the colonies surrounded by the MEFs. This slide describes the merits of the fluorobright DMEM medium. The fluorobright DMEM medium is phenol red free and therefore minimizes autofluorescence while maintaining the cells in a healthy state during the imaging process. As you can see, the optical clarity and fluorescence interference is superior when images of 21-day-old reprogrammed colonies in standard medium on the bottom panel are compared with those of the fluorobright medium on the top panel. The next four slides show tracking of the reprogramming process using live CD44 and live TRA160 markers. As you will see, the colonies transition from CD44 positive cells, which are either unreprogrammed or partially reprogrammed colonies, to fully reprogrammed TRA160 positive colonies. In this slide, at day 11, after initiating reprogramming of BJ fibroblast, the culture growing on MEFs or mouse embryonic feeders was co-stained with CD44 and TRA160 antibodies. CD44 antibodies show green fluorescence and are negative for pluripotency markers. TRA160 antibody shows a red fluorescence and is positive for pluripotency markers. Phase and fluorescent images were taken at lower magnification as seen in the left panel with two emerging colonies detected or at higher magnification as seen in the middle and right panels to view the individual colonies in detail. The immunofluorescence staining indicates that colony number one, as marked in the slide, is CD44 positive and TRA160 negative. It consists of non-reprogrammed, non-pluripotent cells, whereas colony number two, also marked in the panel, is partially reprogrammed with a mixture of CD44 and TRA160 positive cells. This slide shows reprogramming process at day 17. As you can see, phase and fluorescent images were taken of three distinct colonies. Colony number one, as seen in the left panel, consists of non-reprogrammed, non-pluripotent cells that stained positive for CD44 and negative for TRA160 markers. Colony number two, as seen in the middle panel, is partially reprogrammed 
because it shows a mixture of CD44 and TRA160 positive cells. And colony number three, as seen in the right panel, appears to be nearly fully reprogrammed as most of the cells are positive for the TRA160 marker. This slide shows reprogramming at day 29. As you can see, phase and fluorescent images were taken at lower magnification shown in the left panel or at higher magnification shown in the middle and right panels. The immunofluorescent staining identified colonies with a significant amount of differentiation marked by areas lacking both CD44 and TRA160 staining indicated by asterisks in the left and middle panels. We also saw fully reprogrammed or pluripotent colonies that are TRA160 positive seen here in the right panel. These colonies are suitable for picking and further expansion and characterization, which is the first step in derivation of a new IPSC cell line. This slide shows reprogramming at day 32. The immunofluorescent staining identified a fully reprogrammed pluripotent colony that is TRA160 positive as seen in the left panel. The same colony was manually picked and transferred to a new well as seen in the middle panel. After picking, the colony was broken into smaller pieces or fragments by pipetting and transferred into a new well as seen here in the right panel. The transfer and breaking up of the colony into smaller pieces was successful as confirmed by immunofluorescence inspection of the transfer well. This is the best example to show you that live staining not only helps in identification and selection or picking of a pluripotent colony, but also confirms the successful transfer of the same colony into a new well to begin the propagation of a new IPSC cell line. This is an example of reprogramming using feeder-free conditions. At 21 days after initiating reprogramming of donor fibroblasts under feeder-free conditions, a culture growing on vitronectin was co-stained with CD44 and TRA160 antibodies. CD44, as previously mentioned, shows green fluorescence and is negative for pluripotency markers, and TRA160 shows red fluorescence and is positive for pluripotency markers. Phase and fluorescence images from three fields of view are shown here. Immunofluorescence staining confirmed the presence of several pluripotent or fully reprogrammed TRA160 positive colonies surrounded by non-reprogrammed CD44 positive cells. We are now moving on to the fixed cell ICC kit. The fixed cell ICC kit comes in a convenient, ready-to-use format. As you can see here, the secondary antibodies are matched to the primary antibodies. The fixative, the permeabilization buffer, wash buffer, and blocking buffer are included in the kit. Nuke Blue DAPI for nuclear staining is also included in the kit. The kits are available in four different varieties. Pluripotent stem cell immunocytochemistry kit, three germ layer immunocytochemistry kit, human neural stem cell immunocytochemistry kit, and the cardiomyocyte immunocytochemistry kit. Here is the example protocol for the fixed cell ICC kits. The left panel shows the step-by-step -step simple workflow from fixing to imaging. The right panel lists the merits of the kits. 
Antibody kits are offered in the commonly available filters, including FITC, Psi3, or TRITC, and Texas Thread. They provide a streamlined ICC protocol that eliminates unnecessary wash steps. Guidance on volumes is also provided for a variety of culture vessels. As I mentioned before, primary antibodies are perfectly matched with conjugated secondary antibodies, and all the necessary buffers are included in the kits. The kits also offer dual antibody staining options, and DAPI nuclear DNA stain is also included in the kit for convenience. This next slide shows the use of fixed cell ICC kit with the multiplex option. Induced pluripotent stem cells were stained for pluripotency markers, OCT4 and SSCA4 together, and SOX2 and TRA160 together using the PSC ICC kit. Images were acquired using the EVOS FL scope. On the left set or in the left panel, you can see surface markers, SSCA4, and intracellular marker, OCT4 staining, along with DAPI, and the merged image of all three markers. On the right side or the right set of panels, you can see surface marker TRA160 and intracellular marker SOX2 staining along with DAPI and a merged image of all three markers. This slide shows another example of the presence of pluripotency markers using the fixed cell ICC kit. Induced pluripotent stem cells were generated using Cytotune version 2 Send Diary Programming Kit under feeder-free conditions with essential 8-medium and vitronectin as a substrate. The cells were stained for pluripotency markers OCT4 and SSCA4 using the PSC ICC kit. All images were acquired using EVO's FL microscope. You can see that the colonies are positive for the presence of SSCA4 and OCT4, as well as DAPI, in each of the panels at 4x, 10x, 20x, and 40x magnifications. This slide shows stained cells that represent all three germ layers using the fixed ICC kit for specific germ layer markers. Embryoid bodies were made from H9 cells and cultured on gel tracks and allowed to randomly differentiate for 17 to 20 days in DMEMF12 medium with knockout serum replacement. The cells were stained using the three germ layer ICC kit and images were acquired on a Zeiss Axiovert 25 CFL microscope. The antibodies used were ectoderm marker beta-3 tubulin, shown here as TUJ1, mesoderm marker smooth muscle actin, shown here as SMA, and endoderm marker alpha fetoprotein, shown here as AFP. As you can see, the upper left panel shows cells stained with the combination of AFP and SMA along with DAPI. The upper right panel shows cells stained with the combination of AFP and TUJ1 along with DAPI. The lower right panel shows antibody combination of AFP, SMA, and TUJ1 along with additional DAPI nuclear DNA staining. And the lower left panel shows the antibody combination of AFP and SMA along with DAPI for nuclear DNA staining. This slide shows the presence of neural stem cell markers using the NSC-specific fixed cell ICC kit. Neural stem cells or NSCs were generated from an iPS cell line using GIPCO PSC neural induction medium. Cells were cultured on gel tracks coated plates and stained for NSC markers. The left set of panels shows that the NSCs are positive for Nestin and SOX2, 
along with DAPI and OMERGE for all three markers. The right set of panels show that the NSCs are positive for SOX1 and PAX6 along with DAPI and OMERGE of all three markers. This slide shows characterization of cardiomyocytes using the human cardiomyocyte ICC kit. Induced pluripotent stem cells were differentiated using the PSC cardiomyocyte differentiation kit for 11 days prior to staining. The cells were then fixed and stained for two key cardiomyocyte markers, NKX 2.5 for red fluorescence and TNNT2 or CTNT for green fluorescence as shown in this panel. The kit comes with reagents sufficient to stain 50 samples using a 200 microliter staining volume. This kit enables the acquisition of beautiful multiplexed images using commonly available blue-green and orange-red filter sets. In conclusion, I would like to make the following five points. The live TRA160 ICC kit can be used to determine self-renewal properties of routinely cultured pluripotent stem cells, as well as monitor the reprogramming process for easier identification and picking of fully reprogrammed colonies. The fixed cell ICC kits can be used to determine self-renewal, trilineage potential, and neural and cardiomyocyte differentiation potential for normal and disease model stem cell lines. The fluorobright DMEM medium without phenol red and other fluorescent interference is designed for optimal post-staining cell survival as well as superior image acquisition. The EVOS imaging platform is an easy and versatile system with LED light cube technology that allows for outstanding image quality with the lowest photo bleaching. The microscopes can also be placed in the biosafety cabinet. We hope that these PSC kits, along with the germ layer and differentiation kits, will simplify the staining process while significantly enhancing the current characterization approaches available to stem cell researchers. I would like to thank you for your attention and time.